Hello, welcome to Oxide training on pattern discovery product. In this class, you will learn about what we mean by patterns and how we can use pattern discovery to identify these patterns. The pattern discovery process itself requires you to create what we call a profile. Basically, in the profile, we will determine on how to identify the patterns in the event stream. We will also learn about the concepts behind the creation of the profile, as well as advanced options. Once the patterns are discovered, how we can use those patterns and convert them into oxide rules, as well as annotating those patterns to identify the normal behavior of your network, as well as identifying zero-day zero day attacks. So what do we mean by patterns? Patterns are nothing but relationships between events that may indicate emerging threats and or attacks. OK, what do we mean by events? First of all, events are anything that we gather from your network and our host systems that may be of importance to you. For example, all the information that we may capture from IDSs, host systems, card key systems, anything that is of significance, or applications like financial applications, database applications, anything. We, any information that we collect from any of the sources that we want to capture is called an event. So what are patterns? Basically, patterns are looking at these events and saying that here is, is some information that as a group together is of importance. If you look at the individual events, you may not identify a hidden pattern that may be occurring. Whereas if you group them together, all the events together, and look at them holistically, you may identify new patterns. So how is the pattern discovery useful? It's mainly used to discover zero-day attacks. What do we mean by zero-day attacks? Well, let's say you have an IDS. Normally, you will use the IDS to identify the uh, specific pattern of packets that are going on your network. That means you already know what you're looking for. And you're putting that knowledge in the signatures for that IDS. But what if some new type of attack comes into picture? How do you identify that? Well, in this case, you can actually use the pattern discovery and say, hey, these are the kinds of events that are happening. Individually, they may not be malicious, but as a group, this behavior is what we are seeing. Now, obviously, there is no name to those behaviors because this is brand new, but at least you can identify the behavior and give a name to it temporarily until the authorities may come up with the actual name. But at least you don't have to rely upon a new signature from IDS vendors before you can identify the situation. Similarly, you can also identify slow and low attacks. What do we mean by that? Well, let's say somebody comes to your network and scans for information. Doesn't do anything harm, just trying to knock the door to see where it is open and leaves. And he does this, maybe a couple of days later, comes back and does this again. So in other words, they are profiling your network slowly over a longer period of time. Obviously, you will not identify those things, and you will think that the simple ones are very not a harmful at all. But if you look at them in a bigger picture, now you will identify them as, whoa, this guy is coming multiple times and trying to identify things that are holes in the network. 
So that's called slow and low attack. Again, you can use the pattern discovery to identify those things. So what we do is when you run the pattern discovery, it is going to find patterns. Now, some of these patterns are normal behavior in your system. So what you do is you take those patterns and say, hey, this, these patterns are something that are normal. So I don't need to spend any of my, of my time on working on those patterns. That's called profiling the patterns in your network. But for those patterns that are normal in my network, I want to then take those patterns and convert them into rules that we can use in, with Oxide ESM product automatically. So how is the pattern discovery different from rules engine that we have? Well, first of all, the rules engine, the, actually the rules that you create are operating in the memory in the Oxide Manager. So it is inspecting the stream of events that we are receiving at the moment. It is not really used to look into the historical events. Whereas the pattern discovery really operates upon historical events. That means you can schedule the pattern discovery to go look for these things, or you can manually run the pattern discovery to identify patterns. So it is really looking at old events. Again, the rules is similar to IDS where you are specifying certain pattern, if you will, on what you're looking for because you already know that information. And if that pattern occurs, you're trying to take some actions. Whereas pattern discovery is again looking for patterns that you may or may not be aware of. Now, the pattern discovery is a product that requires a separate license from Arcsight. The Arcsight ESM product license is not enough. You have to buy this pattern discovery product. The product itself doesn't require any new software installation. All you need is a license that you would put that on the Arcsight manager. And when you restart the Arcsight manager with that new license, then you will see the pattern discovery option in the navigator panel of the Arcsight console. Okay, so let's now dive into understanding what we mean by patterns. So let's take a very simple grocery transactions example. Because we are all familiar with this. We all go to grocery store to find to buy different items. So here I have multiple transactions. Transaction 1, transaction 2, transaction 3, and 4. Assuming there are four different people that are buying these groceries. If you look at these transactions holistically, that means together, then we are going to identify certain behaviors. For example, there is somebody buying strawberry and bread strawberry jam and bread together and support equals three that means this combination of items are being bought at in at least three different transactions so here here is one two and the third one but if you look at another pattern that is let's say you also include butter along with these three along with these two then we are identifying this in only two different transactions. For example, here is a butter, and here is a butter also that they bought, but these guys did not buy any butter. Whereas if you look at this transaction, this, this particular pattern, somebody bought cereal and milk together in two different transactions. Here is one of them. Here is another one of them. So the common elements of this simple grocery transactions reveal several patterns, right? We saw one, two, and three different patterns. The number of times the pattern elements, that means in this case, these two things together, is called the support value. In this case, there are three different transactions where these two things have happened. 
So now let's translate this information into events. So let's look at that. Now, again, we have this person buying groceries and here are the transactions that she has purchased. These are all the things that she has purchased. So now, when we look at patterns within the events that we receive from all the networks and everywhere else, you can compare a person buying groceries with what we call source target nodes. That means there are events happening between a source and a target payer. Just like this person buying the transactions, the actual events are happening. This, in this case, there are three events that have occurred between this source and target combination. So this is the transaction that has happened between this source and target pair. Let us say that the same events occur between another source target combination then that means the support is two. Because now we have observed the same behavior between two different source target pairs. Then we may call that as a pattern. OK? Now, we will go through a little more concept of this uh, pattern. But let's understand how what the pattern discovery life cycle is about. It's very simple. Basically, there are four steps to this process. First of all, we'll be creating a profile. And then we run that profile against the event stream, historical events, if you will. And that's what we call a snapshot. In that snapshot, you will see the graphical representation of the patterns. And then you can drill down to see individual patterns. Once you have the patterns, you can identify that pattern where it, that pattern has, has occurred. That means it will show all the source target combinations where that pattern has been identified. Later on, you can take several actions on the patterns. So. Let's understand the profile first. Basically, when we create the pattern discovery, you need to create a profile. A profile not, is nothing but you know specifying what filter you want to use. A filter is similar to what you have learned, obviously, in, in the ESM product. Any set of conditions that you may identify. For example, you may say, I want to look at events only coming from DMZ. That could be my filter. And as well as some time frame on which you want to run this profile against to find the patterns. The next thing is you have to specify minimum pattern length and minimum pattern occurrences. Minimum pattern length means how many different events have to occur, how many different events have to occur between the same source and target combination. Whereas minimum pattern length is how many times that particular event pattern has to occur between different source target combinations. In other words, the same pattern must occur at least, in this case, two different source target combinations. And in that pattern, you should have at least three different events occurring. OK? So how do we identify the events? And how do we identify the source and target combinations? In this case, we are looking at the source being the source address field, target being the target address field. Whereas for the events, we are looking at the name field. All right. So 
now let's look at an understanding of the pattern discovery concepts in this case again the source node is attacker address the target node is target address event nodes are i am using name and device product combinations minimum pattern length is 3 minimum number of occurrences is 2 okay what does this mean now so i have a source node i have a target node in this case i have source of 202.98.116.5 going after this target 192.168 address and what are my event nodes we are looking for name and device product combination right so let's say there is an event that we have observed between these two source target pairs ms sql worm propagation attempt identified by snot so in this case snot is the device product and name field is ms sql worm propagation attempt so here is an event that occurred between this source and target pair so let's move on and we also have observed another event ms sql version overflow attempt again identified by snot and now we have another event identified by arc site product so here in this case i have three different events occurring between a source and a target pair in that scenario again minimum pattern length is 3 that means three different events must occur between a source and target pair if that happens then my number of occurrences is 1 let's move on let's say i have a different source target combination and again i have three different events now in this case again i have same events have occurred between the a different source and target pair then that becomes my second occurrence remember we are looking for minimum number of occurrences too so you must have at least two occurrences of the same pattern between different source target combinations but if you look at that the target node is same in with this one and this one is same between these two combinations but the source is different right so as long as the source and target combination is different that's all i care about so that means this becomes a second occurrence since i met the criteria of the minimum pattern length and minimum number of occurrences then this combination of events becomes a pattern and the support in this case is two because i have two different source target combinations the next thing is the order of events does not matter that means let's say i have this event and they followed by this event and and followed by this event but if you look at my previous one so this event has occurred before this event right 1 2 3 but in this case 1 3 and then 2 so the order in which these events occur does not matter for me in identifying that as a pattern as long as at least the minimum number of events occur between another source and target nodes let's say if the same events occur like a b c same three events occur between the same source and target pair let's say we have observed this at 8 o'clock and then we have observed the same events occurring between the same source and target pair again at 10 o'clock let's say it is not considered as another occurrence by default because it's happening between the same source and target by the way there can be more events than the minimum number of events occurring between the source and target nodes that means in this case we are looking at 1 2 3 events well there could be another event that is happening between these two that means there are four events and that's fine i'm looking for at least 3 based on this minimum 
So it can be more than that. That's okay. So now let's look at more examples. Now, if you look at this example, I have source target pair here and I have two events occurring. Is this a pattern? No, because there are only two events, but minimum pattern length is three. So this is not considered for identifying that as a pattern. Is this a eligible for pattern? There are four different events. It is an occurrence because there are at least three events that are part of the pattern. Now, we actually use the end time to, you, to identify the uh, patterns as opposed to manage receipt time. Okay, there are some advanced options on the profiles, couple of them called record time order and split on inactivity. For example, if you if you go back here, um, the record time order and split on inactivity. These are the advanced options that we're discussing about. So what does the record time order do? What it allows you to do is, assuming that events do not occur in the same time sequence. For example, let's say you have three events occurring between two source target combinations. And the first set of events have happened, like for example, A, B, C, assuming there's three other three different events. But if you look at another source target combination, there you have identified the events to occur as A came first, and then C, and then B. So the order in which those three events occurred is different. All the record time order does is tells you that, by the way, of all the transactions that I'm looking at, A, B, C in that order has occurred maybe 40% of the time, Whereas B, A, C has occurred 35% of the time, and then A, C, B is 25% of the time. So you have an idea of how events are occurring in your network. The other thing is split on inactivity. Remember I said that by default, if the same events occur again between the same source and target combination, we do not consider that as an occurrence. But what if it happens? Then, by choosing that option of split on inactivity, we may consider that occurrence of those same events, again, between the same source and target combination, as another occurrence. What that means is, Basically, that identifies a break or a pause in in the time in, in between those two patterns occurring between the same source and target pair. The other thing is, you must have right privileges to snapshot and pattern groups so that you can actually when we identify the patterns, they are stored as resources, which means you have to have right privilege to those groups. So let's look at actually in the product and how we create the profile and go through that process in the actual product itself. For that, you will be using the second session. See you in a few minutes.